My name is John Nielsen, and I am the owner, and uh, I run Wing Chun Hall. And I'm here today with Simon and Justin on the camera, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about some self-defense techniques. Uh, today we're going to talk about the front choke. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that this is not the way we normally teach Wing Chun in the classroom, and this is not a very good way to, to learn Wing Chun. Wing Chun is really about um, learning how your body moves naturally and how to get force out of that and then how you can apply that to um, defending yourself. Wing Chun is all about self-defense. You can't really learn self-defense, or at least in my opinion, you can't learn self-defense um, from videos. You can't learn it on, on YouTube. Well, my main goal here is to um, show you how you can take some of the things out of the Wing Chun forms and you can use those to defend yourself. So, I plan to do a series of videos um, looking at some of the things that people generally talk about as self-defense and then say, here's Wing Chun's approach or here's some um, options that Wing Chun gives you to solve this problem that you've got when somebody's, you know, somebody's doing something to you that you don't want them to do. Um, so like I said, today we're going to start with the, the front choke. I would also like to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've seen um, people um, suggest that you do. and why I don't think that those uh, solutions are as valuable as the solutions that Wing Chun offers. So we're going to start out with that. So Simon's going to going to choke me. Um, he's coming forward. And normally what you see when people do this is they um, put their hands on your shoulders. Now, you know, I, I haven't seen very many people really try to choke anybody out in real life. I mean, not like, not like that. Not going crazy like that. Sure, you know, in, we do certain chokes in in Wing Chun, and I've seen other people do other kinds of chokes in different kinds of fights. This is not one that you see very often, and yet people will say this is a, a very common way to go. Um, I would like to know where they get that information, but um, I doubt that when they actually did it, if they were to do it, they'd stick their hands on your shoulders. I think they'd be putting it around your neck. So if you put them on my shoulders like this, then some of the solutions that people come up with might work. Like, um, most of the time what you see people do is they say that you're going to bring this hand up and you're going to bring it over and you're going to try to chop down like this or you're going to bring it up and you're going to cross over like this. Alright, if his hands are on my shoulders and I start pushing this way like this, I might get, him, get that to come up. But if his hands are around my neck, like I think they probably would be, then as I start pushing in this direction, all I'm doing is helping his strong part of his grip, which is his fingers on the back of my neck, pull me harder. So as I turn in here like this, he just holds me more like that. And so I can't really bring that across and, and pull him off. So uh, yeah, it's something that's going to work for you guys. And the other thing is, is, as he comes in here like this, sometimes what they'll tell you to do is go against his, his joint where it's weak. And if Simon is compliant on this, and he's working with me, and he knows the script, then when I pull here, he'll bend, bend his elbows, and he'll come into me like this. All right, that might work if he's doing that. But if Simon doesn't want to do that, and he's holding me out here, and he's really tight, then when I pull down, I can't break his elbows back like this. Now, you know, okay, it's possible that uh, you've got some secret technique that you're doing, but most of the time when they show you to do this on, on the internet, they're not telling you that secret technique, so it's not going to work for you. Okay, another thing that they tell you to do is to um, circle, say, I'm going to say this hand here, underneath and all the way around. Again, if his hands are on my shoulders here like this, and I circle his hand underneath and up here like this, he'll let me go. But if they're on my neck like this, and I do that, I'm going to drive his thumb, his hand up into my chin and his thumb into my, into my throat. As I come here, it just goes into me like that. Another thing that they'll tell you to do is turn 90 degrees. And again, if his hands are on your shoulders, you turn 90 degrees, you can break that grip. But if his hands on my throat, like this, around my neck, and I turn 90 degrees, I'm just running into his hand. So now, one thing that they do tell you to do, which is smart, is to put their, your chin down when his hand starts to come to your throat. That's good. You can do that, and you can stop him from choking you. But again, if, I, if he had, had his hands there, even if my hands around here like this, and I try to turn 90 degrees, he still got me stuck. If I try to come in here and push him this way, he still got me stuck. I'm trying to get him off balance by stepping back. Well, that might work, but if he keeps pushing me, I'm the one in trouble now. So all of those things, to me, seem like, uh, seem like, uh, uh, well, let's see, inferior solutions. Inferior solutions to your problem. Okay, so I'm going to start giving you some solutions from Wing Chun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the choke into different stages. 
So the first choke, the first stage that I want to talk about is as the hands come to, to you like this. So he's coming at me this before he's even got on my, on my throat. And so I'm going to, I'm going to look at um, chapter 7 of um, Silum Tao, which starts like this. You come out here. So I'm just going to do that. As his hands come forward, I'm just going to cut here like this. I make a triangle with my hand that pushes his hands over to the side, keeps him from choking me, and then I can hit. Okay, so that's one solution that Silum Tao offers. Silum Tao offers another solution from chapter 4, when you're coming out here, and then you come back here, this box out here. As he comes forward, I just hit his hands over like that. Because if his two hands are coming at me at once, it's just like one hand is coming at me. So all I have to do is make a line here like this, brings his hands over, and you see I'm making a wedge. So I'm not trying to come out here like this and just hit his hand. I'm trying to shoot a triangle forward. And he's got to run into that triangle somehow, and that brings him over to the side. So that's one solution, or two solutions from Silum Tao. And that's off of your first stage. So like I said, this first stage is, he's trying to choke me, he hasn't quite gotten to me yet, this is something that I can do. Second stage is when he's going to be actually reaching forward and getting his hands you know, on me like this. Uh, he hasn't started pushing me back yet, his hands are on me there. Okay, so I'm going to give you a solution out of uh, Chum Q. So, as I'm in Chum Q, uh, in chapter uh, 3, 3 and 4, the very first thing that you do is you come down here and then you come up here. So I'm going to work that solution. It's going to come at me here like this. I don't have to go down first. I'm just going to come up here. Now see, the nice thing about this is that even if his hands are around my neck and he's holding tight, I'm going to make a triangle and I'm going to break it out to the sides. Here, like that. So Simon's trying to hold me, but I got, I got through. Both hands coming up. The other nice thing about this is I continue to drive into his face, and now see Simon's the one who's running back, not me anymore. See, I'm the one who's, who is now taking control of the situation. Okay, so that's uh, stage two. That's one solution for stage two from Chum Q. You can also um, get a solution from Bu G in here, which would be to just come up with one hand like that. So as he's grabbing me here, again, I'm gonna come up this way, and I'm gonna go right into his face with the side of my hand, and thrust it back like that. Now, as his head goes back, I'm going to start driving him backwards. So again, an easy, simple solution. The other ones, ones I was showing you before, kind of complicated, take a lot of steps. I'm just going to shoot my hands forward, kind of in a triangle coming at him like that. Um, let's see, another solution. Well, so let's go to the next stage. So the next stage would be, Simon's actually pushing me back. So let's say that he's got me and he's pushing me back towards the wall. I've seen people say you got to push your hands back while you duck your head down. Put your hands back like that and break the fall. Okay, the trouble I have with that solution is that you don't know where that wall is. So, you know, you put your hands back early, put your hands back late, you're not going to do the fall break. So as he grabs me and starts pushing me back, I'm going to duck my head, but I'm also going to stick my leg back behind me and kind of stop me. That's a solution from Chum Q as you get into chapters um, 5 and 6. So, um, yeah, that's, no, sorry, 7 and 8, sorry. That's the solution from um, Chum Q, is to stick my head, my, my foot back like that. So as he starts doing that to me again, and he starts pushing me back, I'm going to do this. And then, as he pushes me, even though I hit the wall, I don't hit the wall, I still got a leg behind me, I can kind of do this. I'm going to duck my head, just like they say. And then once I'm back here, I can still do this other solution that we talked about before. Here's the solution from the dummy, as he does that. So it's going to go one hand, sorry, then the other hand here. So <laughs> One hand into his nose. Um, <laughs> Come here, trying to avoid Simon's face, really. Um, okay, so, so that's a, a possibility from Sean Q uh, and the dummy. And then the last section, the last stage that I want to do is let's say that uh, he's decided, he's got me against the wall, and we're going to kind of go sideways so we can still see from the camera. I'm going to kind of go this way. So he's going to be in here. And so the last thing that I want to do is say, he's actually coming and he's got his elbows down. This makes it hard for me to come. Go ahead, bring him down. Bring him down. Makes it hard for me to come up on the inside like I was just showing you. But he's open here. So this time I do the same thing that I did from the Q, just coming up here, knock him backwards like this, take him away, and then start, you know, start attacking him in here. So again, those are some solutions from, from the Wing Chun forms, showing you that Wing Chun forms are still relevant in um, what you do for self-defense, even though normally in class we don't work situations like this. Wing Chun is not a scenario-based art. Wing Chun is about principles. It's like trying to you know, create a defensive structure and then use that defensive structure no matter what he does to you. But again, um, you could use it in these different situations. So that's all for today. Thanks.